language is full of ambiguity. And if I were to say to you, you'd be really fortunate to get this person to work for you, or I'm so glad to say she's a former colleague of mine, I could be trying to convey two very different messages. On the one hand, if you knew that I liked this colleague, I could be fondly recollecting um, some good collaborative relationships with this person. On the other hand, if you knew I had a really hard time with this colleague, I could be trying to convey that I'm really thrilled to finally be getting rid of this colleague. So as you can tell from these two sentences, uh, it's really important to take into account the immediate context or your knowledge of the situation in order to understand um, the intended meaning. And we're actually really good at this. Even in the few seconds that I've been talking so far, if I were to tell you that on the next slide I'm going to um, dig deeper into our oral knowledge, most of you will recognize that I'm not going to start talking about dental hygiene, but instead I'm going to start talking about the sounds we hear. So in my research, I'm really interested in how children learn about music and language. Uh, and when we listen to speech, uh, there are lots of potential cues that we could listen to in order to extract the most informative information. Uh, and on the top row there, there's duration and loudness. On the second row, there's variations in pitch and time. And in the third row, there are syllables. And these syllables are composed of consonants and vowels. For a child, it might be difficult to figure out which acoustic cues or which set of acoustic cues are most informative and need to be weighed more heavily in order to extract the message. But as adults, we know that when we're listening to song, we ought to weigh the relationships between pitches more so that, so that we can extract a melody and know which song we're listening to. And when we're listening to speech, it's important for us to pay attention to the relationships among syllables and words in, in order to understand who is doing what to whom. And in this way, our knowledge of speech and song and our ability to differentiate between speech and song can help us guide our attention toward the relevant set of acoustic features. And this can have cascading effects on music and language learning within each of those domains. And indeed, that's exactly what I found in my research that I've been doing here at UNLV with four-year-olds. Four-year-olds that are better at differentiating between speech and song also have higher vocabulary. And this is some of the first research that suggests that having well-formed representations of speech as compared to song uh, is beneficial for language learning, like my uh, nephew here, James. Um, and so this research has some real potential for clinical impacts as well. Children with autism have trouble inhibiting the irrelevant pitch information when they're listening to speech. And so a training paradigm like mine could help children with autism learn to pay attention to the relevant acoustic features when they're listening to speech and when they're listening to song. So if you take away one thing from, from this message today, the next time you hear an ambiguous utterance, it's really important to carefully consider the context. Thank you very much.